Satnam. So today we're going to do a Kriya. The Kriya is called Self-Adjustment of the Spine. So for all you people who are missing your chiropractors or you can't make your appointments, this is something that you can do, you can do for yourself. There's only four things that we're going to do. They're not very hard, but they're very, very effective. They balance the pelvis, they balance the neck. You get those two things in alignment with each other and you're going to be pretty good. So I'm going to go through this with you. I'm going to tell you some good pointers as you're doing it so you can get the maximum benefits from it. So this is a Kriya, so we're going to tune in. So everybody sit down in a comfortable position, sit cross-legged, sit as I'm sitting in what's called rock pose. <clears throat> Any position is fine. So take our hands, let's rub them together. Close our eyes. Take our palms, <clears throat> press them together. Take your thumbs, press them up into your sternum. Take in a nice deep, long breath. Pause it at the top. So breathe in deep. Exhale. Another long, deep breath. Pause it at the top. Exhale. And then inhale to tune in to the Adi Mantra. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Big inhale. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Inhale. Om. Exhale. So, I'm going to keep us on a timer. <clears throat> These go pretty quick. <clears throat> They're standing positions, so they go pretty quick. So the first position that we're going to do is we're going to do tree pose. And we're going to do tree pose for four minutes on each side, which sounds like a lot. Now, when you first start doing this, it's actually your, your arch that starts to hurt a little bit. <clears throat> the balance, of course, is, is all over the place. but that doesn't matter. I'm going to show you some things that you can do that will be helpful for, you know, getting going so that you can increase your, your balance more and more and more. So again, we're going to do two minutes of our hands pressed together at our chest with our shoulders down. And you're not going to be able to see my arms, but <clears throat> when we ask you to put your arms up, they're going to come up over your head so that your palms are together. So if you have to keep your elbows bent like this, that's fine. If you can keep your elbows this like this, this is fine. If you can completely straighten them out, that's fine too. It doesn't matter what you can do, but what you're looking to do is just put some pressure in your palms. And just over your head like this with pressure in your palms, this is good. So we're going to start with two minutes of this, two minutes of that. And then we're going to switch. Okay, so I'm going to time us. And these go pretty quick. There's not a lot of rest in between. So this is a very quick set to do. Maybe 20 minutes or so. So, <clears throat> everybody ready? Here we go. We're going to stand on our right foot first. So, put your hands at your chest. <clears throat> You're going to stand on your right foot. So this foot can do a couple different things. It can come down to your ankle, kind of like a kickstand, if you're just learning to get your balance. You can come up to where your knee is. Or, if you've got really good flexibility, you can take it all the way up so that your heel is into your pubic bone, and then you can, you can hold it like this. Or, you can bring it up high, up on the thigh, and hold it in this position. Whatever position you want to do, go ahead and do. 
I'm going to put mine down here because it's going to be hard for me to talk and uh, focus at the same time. I don't want to wobble all over the place. So I'm going to keep mine down here, <clears throat> but you're standing on this foot. Now, here are the tips with this. So keep going <clears throat> and here are the tips. No matter where you are on, on, your, on your leg, right? So if, if it's just down here, if it's up here, it, it doesn't matter where you are. Wherever you are, you're going to take your right foot and push that into the ground. That's grounding you. You're trying to keep your hips so that they're level, right? So that they're this way. One's not higher, one's not forward. You're trying to maintain a very strong tree trunk as you're standing in this position. So again, palms are like this, and we're still standing. We've already started the clock, so we're standing. We've got another 30 seconds in this position. I'm just giving you tips so that you can later on progress into this so that you'll be able to stand nice and tall. Wherever is touching, so if this foot is touching here, put some pressure into, the, into the, the whole foot that is pushing against the leg because believe it or not, you're still standing on two feet, right? Whether, wherever the foot is on your body, you're still standing. So you can shift the pressure through your body by standing and pushing that foot wherever it may be. <clears throat> so again, standing here in this position. Now arms, arms are gonna come up over our heads, right? And again, either if you don't have the extension to bring your arms straight up where the elbows are straight, then bring them to a point where you can keep your palms together. You're better keeping your palms together than you are straightening your hands, but yet you see this gap that starts to come up like this, because the more you start to straighten your elbows, you're gonna get some separation. You don't want that. It's better to keep this. Put some pressure here, put it up over your head, and as you're able, by putting steady pressure in your palms, you'll see that by using some strength, you'll be able to slowly be able to get your elbows to get straight, but yet you've never had the palms come apart. So <clears throat> staying in this position, and don't worry if you're wobbling around. If you've got the kickstand down like me, that's fine. Again, if you're here, that's fine. If you're here, that's fine. It doesn't matter where you are. Just pick a spot. Another thing that you can do to help you stay in this position is you focus. You can focus straight ahead of you. You can focus down on the ground. Pick a spot. Pick a spot, focus, and stay there. So just stay with this, grounding through the right leg, pushing down. Pelvis, do your best to keep it straight. Chest out, chin in, being pulled up. So your entire body is being pulled up as you're rooting down. So tree pose is exactly that. We're doing two different things. We're rooting and growing, just like a tree. So a tree roots and a tree grows. This helps us to stand tall. This increases our posture. Increasing our posture, you're pulling on your spine, and you're gonna to start to understand what we're doing is we're trying to lengthen the spine. Most of our spinal problems that we have have to do with the fact that there's too much compression. So we're trying to lengthen them, okay, through standing. So, <clears throat> taking a deep breath, hold, squeeze everything, relax. Bring your feet together, put your palms forward, spread your hands. I'm going to stand here for just one minute. I'm going to just stand in mountain pose for just a minute. And then we're going to switch legs. Now you should, if you are doing pretty well with this, you'll feel that this, you're off. You'll be like, oh my god, I, I, you don't feel like you're standing on your feet evenly. That's good. You should feel like that. It should feel just a little bit off. So again, what we're looking to do is we're looking to, the foot that we're standing on, push that into the floor. The leg that's up against our other leg, or the foot that's up against our other leg, you're gonna use just a little pressure into that and, and use that as well to make contact. And then you're going to be pulling up, right? Pulling up as you're standing here. Switch legs. <clears throat> Again, for, you, for those people, we're going to palms together at the chest. For those people that want to use the kickstand, you use the kickstand with your heels down there and your toes kind of touching the floor. If you can come up a little higher, do that. But don't be on your knee. You don't want to be on your knee. <clears throat> if you can come up to above your knee, or I actually have to pull my foot up to do that, you can do this and the pressure can be there. And again, for those people who are really flexible, bring it all the way up and you can bring your heel so that it touches your pubic bone. 
<clears throat> again, just so I can talk to you without, because I need to focus on this one or I, I wobble all over the place. I'm going to keep my, my foot touching just so I can tell you some tidbits what you should do to focus to get the most out of this. So again, now we're pushing down through our left leg. <clears throat> we're tucking our pelvis in by lifting up our chest and pulling our chin backwards. Maintaining steady pressure and putting pressure into your palms with your shoulders down, elbows relaxed. This will also help you maintain the position. So just feel that you're steady in the position, feel you're wobbling in the position. It doesn't matter because even a tree, a tree sways. Ever notice a tree, right? It's a little bit windy, it sways back and forth. So swaying's okay. You don't have to stand here like a, a statue. <clears throat> But just know that you're building up your arches. So many people have fallen arches, some people have high arches. All of it has to do with just improper positioning through gravity. You're gonna hear me over and over and over and over again talk about gravity and the importance of gravity. So again, left leg pushing down, pelvis tucked, chest out, chin in, being pulled up, strong trunk. <clears throat> if you're able, if you've got all that down and you're able, now what you can start to focus on is this leg slowly starting to rotate backwards. But if you don't have the ability to keep your hips in a position, so arms up now. <clears throat> so again, pressure in the hands, arms up over the head, keep the pressure in the hands, two minutes in this position. If you don't have the ability to take this leg and start rotating it backwards without your pelvis following it, don't do that. Just stay there until your pelvis is ready where you can start to get this slow rotation without your pelvis going along for the ride. Because you're far better off just standing here in this position, working on your arch, allowing that symmetry to come back into position. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring some symmetry back. <clears throat> so stay here. <clears throat> stay here, be steady, and let the position find you. That's a lot of what yoga is, is letting the position find you. And even though I'm not technically, technically doing this, I can feel a, a shift. I can feel a difference in, in, in the little bit that even that I'm doing. And I'm, I'm not in a position that I would normally be in, but again, just one that I can speak to you on. So I'm going to be here for just one more minute. Just be here. Listen to everything I said. I'm going to be quiet and let you just focus on what you're doing, which is standing. So just stand. Keep the pressure in your palms. Breathe normal. Twenty more seconds. If your arch is starting to hurt in your foot, that's okay. In a very short amount of time, just a few days, you do this a few days in a row, your arch starts to gain strength so quickly that it'll help you to stand. It'll help to bring your balance. Inhale deep, squeeze up tall, exhale, relax the arms down, stand once again with your palms facing forwards, fingers are spread, push your feet into the ground, lift up your chest, tuck in your chin, be tall, lengthen, be tall, but push your feet into the floor. That should feel a little off too, and we're going to correct that with the next position. So just. Close your eyes and just breathe. Okay, here's the next position. Look at the screen for a second. <clears throat> so what I want you to see is we're going to clasp our hands. Ladies, you're gonna have your, your little pinky of the right hand on the bottom. So your right pinky is on the bottom as you cross over your hands. You're going to cross over your left thumb over your right. So again, 
right pinky is on the bottom. We're just clasping our hands. Your right pinky is on the bottom. Left thumb over the right. For us guys, we're going to do the exact opposite. Our left pinky goes on the bottom. Our right pinky goes on top. Cross your, your hands over. And we cross our right thumb over the left. <clears throat> it's called Venus Lock. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to place our hands on the top of our head. So you're just going to place them on the top of your head. You're going to keep your elbows backwards. You're going to put your feet so that your heels are touching, but you're making a V. So your heels touch, but you're going to make a V so that your feet are, are pointing up. I think you can kind of see my, yeah, you can see my feet. So you can see that my heels are touching, but my feet are out at like a, you know, about a 45 degree angle. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is this. I'm going to show you from the side. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand like this with our hands on our head. And we're going to, for a count of five, breathe out on the way down. And then for a count of five, breathe in on the way up. So here's what it looks like. Don't do them yet. So we're going to breathe in, breathe out as we come down. For a count of five, two, three, four, five. And then up, one, two, three, four, five. And then down, one, two, three, four, five. Up, one, two, three, four, five. How far down you go doesn't matter. What you don't want to do is stop putting your butt out as you go down. You want to tuck your pelvis under. See what's happening? Not this, this. So that when you come down, if this is where you stop because you can't go down any further, then that's where you stop. If this is where you stop because you can't go down further without collapsing your back, then this is where you stop. But let it take you five seconds. So if you're only going this far, one, two, three, four, five, that's how far you go. One, two, three, four, five. If you can go all the way down, one, two, three, four, five, and then up, then that's what you do. All right? I'm going to time it. <clears throat> We're going to do 21. So this is not done for a time. This is done for a repetition. So 21 times, five seconds down, five seconds up. Breathing out on the way down, breathing in on the way up. I'm going to time it. So once you've gotten to 21, stop. If you haven't gotten to 21, you're going too slow. If you beat 21 before the timer goes off, you're going too fast. All right, so I'll do these with you. <clears throat> these take some breath. So breathing in and out through your nose. Hands on top of your head in the position I told you and begin. Keeping the chest out and the chin in just going into a nice, slow movement. So I'm not keeping track of what I'm doing time-wise. I'm just showing you what the position is. So you're the one keeping count. I'm not keeping count. You keep count. You keep your own count. I just want to show you, if you're watching on the screen, this is a spot that you can stop. If, you, if you're not collapsing your back, you can come right back up. If you can come down further, that's good. Come on back up. One little trick with this is that as you're doing it, <clears throat> if you can sort of come down and put the pressure in your heels, you'll be able to come down further. And then as you come up, you kind of can push down into your heels and you'll be able to come up a little bit easier too. So just keep going, keeping your count. <clears throat> Hands are on top of the head. Elbows are back, coming up in this nice, slow, steady movement. Now, when you go down, what we're doing is we're adjusting our lower back and lengthening still. So if you do this in a sloppy way, keep going. We're not there yet, about halfway. <clears throat> As you go down, what you're looking to do is lengthen through here. This, this part of our spine we want to lengthen because if you keep your chest out and then your chin pulled back in as you go down there's going to come a point where it's like you're you'll feel stuck and if you're stuck you can't go down any further that's where you stop and then you come back up the more length you start to get out of your body the better this is going to be because again what we're doing is we're starting to balance what we just did so now we're pulling up through our sacrum we're pulling our sacrum we're pulling through our spine 
And we're using our musculature to do this. And we're using a pattern of breathing in and out through just the nose <clears throat> that we can go down and come back up, go down and come back up. So keep going. You have another minute or so. So you should probably be on, what, like maybe 16 or so right now, something like that. I don't know. I'm not keeping count. But again, just keep going up and down slow. <clears throat> 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. That's one, that's one repetition. Keep going. Got about 50 seconds left. But this is about the right amount of time that you want to do it for. <clears throat> 21 should take you, what is it, like 220 seconds. So uh, I've got it on my phone. I don't know what the math is, whatever the math is. But 21. If you've done 21, you've gone too fast. If you haven't done 21 yet, you're doing good. You've got 30 more seconds to go. For those of you who have finished, you finished too early, but that's okay. You get the time and tempo down. Stand in mountain pose. So just stand. His fingers are spread. And you should be done by now. So everybody come into mountain. So again, if you finished way early, well, you gotta slow down. If you hadn't finished yet, if you hadn't finished yet, <clears throat> then speed up. Just stand here for a moment. Just balance that out. Catch your breath. It's a very good one to do. You want to go faster because you feel like you're just doing squats. But again, this is self-adjustment of the spine. This is you. This is you using some movements to so just kind of like pull the spine slowly this way and that way every time you do that. So again, that one there, keeping your chest out and your chin in is going to help to lengthen that. So as you're doing the movement, pay attention to that. That's important. Now you're gonna come with your legs a little, little more than hip width apart. You know, a, a nice straddle position. And your feet just, just slightly pointing like a, like a, I don't know, 15, 20 degree angle. So they're not straight. They're just, they're just you know, comfortable. Just get in a nice comfortable position. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, bounce. And let me just explain this for a second. So we're going to just watch. So I'm going to inhale and then and then I'm going to exhale. And as I exhale, I'm going to bring my hands. So whatever they, if, if you can touch your, your feet, then that's what you're going to do. If you can only come down here and touch your knees, then that's what you're going to do. If you can only touch your shins, that's what you're going to do. But what you're going to do is you're going to keep your chest up and your chin in. Put that on pause for a second. You're going to keep your chest out, chin in always, because that creates what we call neck lock. This is important. This pulls <clears throat> the muscles that we want to try and correct into a better position. I told you in the beginning, this has to do with the pelvis and the neck and the shoulders. It's going to align them. We align those and everything else in between kind of comes into position. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna breathe in, going to exhale. And then as we exhale, we're gonna bounce our bottom up and down 11 times. And then each time you do it, you're gonna breathe out through your nose. So just watch for a second and then I'll, I'll go to the side so you can see what it, what it looks like. But I'm gonna breathe in, breathe out, and then and then breathe in breathe out go again so watch before you do it I want you to see it from the side so once again breathing in breathing out coming down and keeping your chest up so chest is up chin is in still in this position gazing forward and what we're looking to do is bounce our bottom so as we lift it a little bit, we come down. So it's up and down. And every time it comes down, you sniff out through your nose. When it comes up, you breathe in. So it sounds like this. And then stand up and do it again. Okay, everybody ready? Got it? Comfortable position, <clears throat> wherever you can touch, knees, ankles, feet. Be tall, chest out, chin in. Ready? Inhale deep. Exhale. Bounce. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good. 
Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Keep going. <clears throat> That's the rhythm. Keep going. So you're bouncing your bottom up and down 11 times. If you're starting to get lightheaded, just come stand for a moment, recatch your breath, and then go back down. But keep going. You're going to do this for another two minutes. <clears throat> this is very good. Now, I told you another tip here. This is going to make this more effective is that when you come up, just squeeze your kneecaps together for that pause and then do the position again. So if you're doing it, if I'm doing it now where I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out, going down, 11 for a count of 11. And then inhaling up. And as I inhale up, I give a little squeeze. And what that's doing is that's contracting. If you feel that, that's contracting. When you contract your quads, because we're in this straddle position, you're also contracting the internal muscles. We call these our adductor muscles. You're contracting these. These come and they attach to the pubic bone. And we've got a couple of big muscles in through here. The adductor magnus is one that is a very powerful, keep going, you got a little longer to go. It's a very powerful muscle, and what it does <clears throat> is it, we call it, in massage terms, we call it the great pelvic distorter. Because what it does is because it's so big and where it attaches, it kind of pulls your body in, in a position that you don't want it to be in. And if there's an imbalance, what ends up happening is it just creates a, a strain and pressure on the pubic bone, which in turn creates pressure and problems down through your sacral iliac joint. So any of you who have problems with your lower back, your sacrum, <clears throat> things like that, these muscles. So when you come up, give it a little squeeze, okay? That's why you're doing it. You're coming up, you're giving it a little squeeze. And then lastly, what you can do as you're still doing these is that make sure that when you're going down that you feel your feet pushing into the floor. Anytime you're doing a standing position, make sure your feet are into the floor. You got 10 more seconds. I think these ones good. Inhale deep, come up. <clears throat> Stand back into mountain pose. Hold the position. <sighs> Exhale the breath. Just catch your breath a little bit. <clears throat> if you're doing this with your full effort, your legs are right now should be like a little, a little wobbly, a little less spaghetti-like. <clears throat> Especially if you're you're coming up and you're squeezing the kneecap as you come up, because again, that's going to contract the not just the IT band, but it also contracts the inner thigh muscles. And or again, what we're looking to do is we're looking to balance our pelvis so that we're strong. We can stand strongly on our feet. So the last position that we're going to do is again, it's in a straddle position. And what we're going to do is once again, you're going to get back to a comfortable position. If this is what's comfortable, fine. But you want to be in a nice straddle kind of a position. And what we're going to do is we're going to take in a deep breath. And as, so just watch for a second, our arms are going to be out. So we take in a deep breath. We're going to exhale that breath. And as we exhale, we're going to take our right hand and we're going to put it down onto our left foot. As we do that, what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep our pelvis steady. So we, we don't want it to rotate forward too much, right? So when we're this way, we don't want it to rotate forward too much. We're trying to keep it so that when we go down, we're getting this nice length through our torso. So you're going to inhale in this position, and then you're going to exhale. As you exhale, this hand comes down while simultaneously your opposing arm comes up. But instead of looking up at your hand, now this aligns the hips and the neck. And this is, this is a really good position. But you're going to look straight down. So our hand is touching here. We're trying to rotate ourselves so that we're looking straight down at this straight line in between us as this arm is up. Now, this is important. This is where you really want to squeeze your knees through this whole process. Your knees should be locked the whole time. The whole time we do this, we're going to lock our knees. This is really going to put that pressure on the inside, the outside, pushing our feet into the floor and keeping our pelvis aligned. So as we do this, chest out, chin in, 
We're going to come down. We're going to hold this position for 10 seconds, breathing normally. And then we're going to inhale back up. And we're going to switch and do the other side. Okay? Here we go. Three minutes of this. <clears throat> Inhaling here. Exhaling, come down. Touch your right, uh, your left foot with your right hand. Look straight down. Lift up your chest. Tuck in your chin. Squeeze in your knees. Inhaling up. Exhale. Left hand onto the right foot. Right arm reaching high, chest out, chin in, staring down at the ground, squeezing your kneecaps, inhale up, exhale down, breathe normal, squeezing your knees the whole time, don't forget to do that. And then inhaling up, exhaling down. Breathing normally, 10 seconds, squeezing your kneecaps. Inhaling up, keep going. I'm gonna to talk to you for a few minutes, keep going. What's very important when you're doing this is again, squeezing your knees. That keeps your pelvis in the position that we want it to be, which is fairly stable. So when we go to do our movements, we're, ne we're not moving necessarily our pelvis as we are lengthening through our spine. Again, keeping in mind, this is self-adjustment of the spine. And in order to have that happen, we need a very strong anchor. This is your anchor. You're rooting down. So another thing that you can do as you're doing this, as long as you're not pregnant or menstruating, you can squeeze the root lock. The root lock, if you've watched some of the other videos, you know, if you don't, I'll explain it real quick, is like a kegel, except you squeeze your rectum, your sex organ, and your navel point all at once. So you lock down your lower pelvis by just pulling up on the pelvic floor. So squeezing your rectum, your sex organ, and then your navel point, which is just below the belly button, and you kind of just pull all that up gently. As you do this movement, as you lock your legs, as your arms are out straight, and then as you come down through normal breathing with your, your head looking straight down in front of you, arms reaching up high as it can. You got 30 more seconds. Arm reaching up, and then you just continue this process of just coming back and down, breathing for 10 seconds. And again, if you can't reach, you can come to this. This is fine too. You can come a little further, that's fine. You don't have to hit the floor, though it's better if you do so. Inhale deep and come to a mountain pose. Hold the position, squeeze everything tight. Just contract your whole body. Squeeze everything tight. Exhale. Deep breath, exhale. Now, lie down on the floor. This is as important as anything else. Get a blanket, cover yourself up. For six minutes, we're gonna lie down. You need to absorb what it is that you just did. You, you just stressed out your nervous system. Now you need to absorb it. So lie down. If you have a blanket, great, cover yourself up. <clears throat> I like this part. <clears throat> so we're going to lie down. And oh, did you hear my back? I don't know if you heard that. If you, if you roll down slowly, some of you will have your, your spine adjust by just the pressure of the floor against you. Um, that was nice. <laughs> so lie down. <clears throat> you can listen to your favorite music. <clears throat> lie in silence. But for six minutes, just enjoy the efforts that you just put in.
Slowly start to deepen your breath. Start to roll your wrists and your ankles in one direction. And then reverse direction. Oops, rotate them around. Take your toes and point them towards the wall, or wherever wall you have it. Your arms up over your head, and then rest them on the floor. Stretch. Push your whole back, the back of your legs, your head. Push it all into the ground as you take a long, deep stretch. Hold your breath. Breathe deep. Hold, push, and stretch. Exhale. I'm going to come into cat stretch. So if you've got a blanket, get rid of it. <clears throat> come rolling on your right side. <clears throat> Keep your right leg straight. Activity complete. Bend your left knee so that it touches the floor. With outstretched left arm, start to rotate it so that it comes back and bring your head in that same position at the same time. Trying, if you can, to keep your knee on the floor and ultimately your left arm would touch on the floor. Take a couple of deep breaths in this position. And then, almost like you're yawning, oh, just take a nice big stretch. And then switch positions, so your left leg now is straight, your right knee is bent with your foot behind your knee, your left arm is out straight, <clears throat> heads on the floor, right arm now comes down, touches the floor as the, the right knee stays on the floor, your head rotates over, you hold this position, take a couple of breaths, and then breathe in deep, and stretch, oh, just like you're being pulled in all different directions. Exhale, come lying on your back, <clears throat> bring your knees up off the floor so your feet are off the floor, bring your feet off the floor, your knees coming in towards your chest. Take your palms, rub them together. Take your feet, rub them together. <clears throat> Squeeze onto your knees by bringing your um, knees closer to your chest. Take your nose and bring your nose in between your knees. And just take a couple of breaths in this position. And then slowly start to rock back and forth on your spine. And then come to a sitting position. <clears throat> that is self-adjustment of the spine. <clears throat> We're going to pair this with a, <clears throat> a simple meditation that you can do. And anybody that has any kind of a, a real desire to, to really want to learn pranayam, this is a fundamental breath that you can learn. And a world, I, we are only going to do it for three minutes. But I just want you to understand how it's done. So I'm going to set the timer here. Here's how, what we're going to do. We're going to take our right thumb and we're going to block off our right nostril. Our other fingers are going to be up straight. We're going to breathe in, and you can do this now. Breathe in through your left nostril. And then take your pinky, your right pinky, block off the left nostril and breathe out. Now, keeping the left nostril blocked off, breathe in through the right nostril. And then now block off the right nostril with the right thumb, breathe out through the left. Now breathe in through the left nostril. Block it off. Breathe out through the right. Breathe in through the right. Breathe out through the left. In through the left. Out through the right. In through the right. Out through the left. 
in, out, in, out. Now you keep doing this. This is opposite nostril breathing. There's a pattern that you can do when you do this as far as a ratio is concerned. And you can try this. You're gonna try this on your own because the video is kind of getting long already, but I want you to pair this meditation with it. So what we just did physically helps to adjust the spine. What you're doing now adjusts how the breath moves through your body. So it also helps to adjust the spine. So pair these two together, they're wonderful to do. But when you do this meditation, you're gonna do this in a count of four. So we're gonna breathe in, one, two, three, four, and then we hold for 16. One, two, three, four, all the way to 16. And then you, you come out and you breathe out for a count of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you breathe in for a count of four. One, two, three, four, hold for 16, breathe out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you do that for 11 minutes. To begin with, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. When you get that down, you understand the whole opposite nostril thing, then add in the ratio. And the ratio is one, four, two. So you breathe in for, and it's best done as a four count. So we're doing a multiplier. So it's a one, four, two ratio. So if we breathe in for four, then that means the the four, the multiplier of four, because it's a one, four, two ratio, you're, you're breathing in for a count, I mean, holding your breath for a count of 16. So breathing in for four, holding for 16, out for two. So breathing in for a, a one multiplier, so if you were to breathe in for one, which is too quick, you breathe in for one, you'd hold for four, you'd breathe out for two. And then you'd, you'd start again, breathing in for one, hold for four, out for two. But again, it's best done as a multiplier of four. It's a great place to start. So breathing in for four, hold for 16, breathe out the opposite nostril, for eight, breathe in for four, hold for 16, out for four. And then you do that for 11 minutes. If you have questions or comments about that, let me know and I can put something together for you so you can, you can see it. But that's how it's done. To start with, breathe in, breathe out until you get that done. And make the breath long and slow, right? Long, slow. If you're not using the ratio, long and slow. And then exhale. Long and slow. When you use the ratio, you follow the ratio. I wish you well. Use this set. It's a wonderful set to do. Your legs should be a little bit wobbly, hopefully, as you walk out. But this is one of those quick sets that when you get good at it, it just it adjusts things really quickly. Put your hands together, rub them, bring them to your chest. We'll take one long, slow, deep sat nam while we end the class. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale. So. your hands to your forehead, bow down, touch your head to the floor, be grateful for the teachings, inhale up, relax your arms down, satnam.